So there are two different ways to creating forms in Angular. You can either create a template driven form or a reactive form. And I'm going to give you an example of each in this video. And then you can decide which one is best suited for your particular situation. So let's actually create a simple form to start off with. So I'm going to create a form tag and it's going to be a kind of sort of login form. So we're going to have an input and I'm going to give it a name of username. The type will be uh, text. And then we'll also create another input uh, with a name of password. And then the type will also be, uh, well, we'll change that one to password actually. And then the other thing we're going to need is a button just to actually submit the form. So we'll say uh, the button, um, just say login. And what we've got on the page now is simply a bit of HTML, uh, which is represented by these controls that you can see on the page. So of course, clicking the button, nothing happens. The form will still be submitted, but it will do naturally what a HTML form will do, and that is to reload the page with a, a get request with the get, uh, parameters of the form as the get parameters. So if I just open up my uh, browse a little bit more there, you can see those are the get parameters that have been added. So that's generally not the behavior that you're going to want for your forms. So what we can actually do is intercept the event by just tagging on here uh, the event listener for submit. And we'll say we're going to run the submit uh, form function. And we can pass in the event that is registered for that submit event when it's fired. And then in the app component, what we can do is create a function called submit form and we'll get access to that event object that's been passed in. And then we can say event.prevent default. And we'll also log something to the console just to say that the form is submitted. So now when we go to the form and click the login button, the page isn't reloading and we're getting that console uh, message out. So we've now set up a process for when the form is submitted, we can handle the data in the form uh, inside this submit form function. But of course, we do, if we type anything into the form at the moment, even when we click login, we don't have access to any of that information, at least in an Angular type way. You'd have to use some query selectors to actually reference those elements and then get the value outside of those forms. But that's where Angular does all of the hard work for us. And we can do this, as mentioned, either with a template driven form or a reactive form. So let's see how we can convert this existing form into a template driven form. So for these two inputs, for a template driven form, all we really need to do is set up the data binding for them. So we would use ng model with the banana in the box sy uh, syntax as we've seen before. So we would do something like this. We'd say ng model is equal uh, to, uh, we'll give put property name on the class called username. And then we do the same thing again for ng model. Uh, but this time it's going to be for password. And as soon as we save that, we'll get some errors, mainly because we haven't imported the forms module. So ng model isn't available as a directive on those inputs. So let's sort that first. Let's go back over to the imports for the component. So we're going to import the forms module. And now the other error is that we're getting is we don't have those properties to bind to. So we need username and password set up as properties on the class. So username is all lowercase with a string. And we'll just initialize it as an empty string. And we've got password, which is also a string, and we'll initialize that as empty as well. So now we've got access to the username and password data properties on our class, and we can make use of that when we submit the form. One thing we could do is just to log out the values. So we can say this.username and also this.password. And if we just fill something out in those two boxes and click login, you can see the form submitted and we've also got the information that we typed into those boxes because they're now stored in username and password. So in a nutshell, that is how you do template driven forms. You first of all create the markup for your actual form, set up a submit event so that when the form submitted, a particular function is run. And then we've got the data binding set up using ng model. So that's fairly straightforward and it's quite useful for smaller forms. Uh, but the only thing is we might want to get a reference to the form as a whole and see what data has actually been filled out. And that along with a lot of other features is what reactive forms in Angular offers us. So let's have a look at how we can convert this really simple template driven form into a reactive form.
So the first thing we need to change with the actual form itself is just to remove the ng model. Let's do that from both of the two inputs that we've got. And then we actually, although the input has got a name, we give it another directive, another name, which is the form control name. And I'm just going to use the same name here. And the same thing for password as well. And we'll probably get an error if we save that now. Yes, something, some errors going on here in the console. This is because we don't have the reactive forms module installed at the moment. So we'll fix that in just a second. But there's one other thing that we need to set up on the form, and that is to give the form group property on the form a name as well. And this is actually going to reference an object that's inside of our class, inside of the component. So we'll say, this form group is represented by a variable called login form. So let's go over now to the app component and we're going to first of all create that login form form group. So let's remove those two properties that we've got there. So login form is going to be a form group which we need to import from the reactive forms rather the forms module and we can just assign that the value of a new form group object. So a form group is basically an object that represents all of the different controls or the inputs that are inside of our form. So when we're creating a new form group in this way, we pass in an object and each of the keys of the object is the name of the input that we're creating for. In other words, the form control name that we set up here just a moment ago. So we need two properties on our object of username and password. So let's set one up here for username and then a second one for password. And the values of these properties need to be a form control, which again is imported from the forms module. So we'll create a new form control. And we can initialize the form control that we're creating uh, with a particular value. Um, this time I'm just going to use an empty string for both of them. And we'll say new form control. And that's basically constructed a new form group object which is passed in to the template here and then we recognize the username and password form, form controls and we uh, basically reactive forms is going to set up all the data bindings for us uh, and keep everything in sync. So let's just remove this console.log down here for the moment because that will cause an error when we try and run the code. But there's one last thing that we need to do. Although we've got the forms module imported here at the moment, we need to swap that out for the reactive forms module. Uh, and chances are you might be using both. You might be using a bit of ng model somewhere in your component or within your app, and you might be using reactive forms somewhere else as well. So it's fine to mix both of them together. So now we've got our app back up and running and we've got the input boxes to fill in again. Uh, of course, we're not logging anything to the console. So let me just log out what the form group looks like. So this dot login form is the name of the form group on the uh, class that we've created. And if we just type something into here and click login, scroll to the bottom of the output here. What we actually get, rather than the value that's stored inside the form, is we get the form group object itself. And this is the reactive form bindings that have been set up for us. So we can see certain information about it, such as whether there are any errors, what the status of it is, whether it's valid or invalid, and many other things as well, such as listening for changes. So whenever something changes in the form group, we can be notified of it and run some particular function. But although that all this stuff is really useful, the thing that we really want to get is the value of it because that will get us back to the same place that we were with the template driven form. So if we just access the value property that's on the login form and just type something in here, you can see we're getting that message saying the form submitted and we've got a nicely formatted object with the properties of the form control names and also the value that was typed into them. And if we actually remove one of those values from there, you can see we still get the password property on the object, but now it's an empty string because no value was supplied to it. So that's just a quick overview of the differences between template-driven forms and reactive forms. Hopefully you can see how the reactive form is mainly controlled from the component and it makes it easier to programmatically add and remove things by accessing the different properties in the form group. Whereas a template-driven form is a little bit more static in that we create the markup for it and then apply ng models to all of the inputs 
that are inside of the form. And with the reactive forms, there's lots more that you can do with it, as mentioned, such as listening out for errors and for changes that happen within the form. And if you want to know a little bit more about how all that works, then you should check out this next video where we go a bit more in depth with reactive forms in Angular.